assalamu alaikum and welcome back to to this next video and this is there is a question from november 11 variant 43 and here is the question from the book you can see that okay here is this question i'm just going to read it out it says uh, the diagram shows a ring of mass 2 kg threaded on a fixed rough horizontal rod okay and um, you can see there is just one diagram over here i have drawn these two you'll just find out that why i have drawn two this this twice okay it says the diagram shows a ring of mass 2 kg so in both of these uh, like diagrams i should be showing the weight this is 20 newtons and i'll be showing the weight 20 newtons here as well okay then it says a light string is attached to the ring and is pulled upwards at an angle of 30 degrees okay so um, i'll be resolving this quickly uh, here it is this is going to be t cos 30 this is t sine 30 here is the uh, t cos 30 and here is the t sine 30 okay and you should allow me to um, show this r like this over here here is the r okay r this is the normal contact force whenever there are like two surfaces they are in, uh, in in contact so you must be able to determine the uh, normal contact force and the frictional component of that force okay so now why do we have these two diagrams the question says the um, the coefficient of the friction between the ring and the rod is 0.24 so we are given this uh, mu as 0.24 it says find two values of t for which the ring is in limiting equilibrium okay got it so that is why i have these two diagrams it, it, it says find two values of t for which the ring is in limiting equilibrium so when it is in limiting equilibrium so we can um, consider two cases one when this ring is about to slip downwards and in the second case when this ring is about to slip upwards now what will happen when you consider this um, ring to be about to be slipping downwards then the frictional force will be acting upwards and if it is about to slip upwards then the frictional force will be acting downwards so you see that is how the, the situations they are, they are going to change and now uh, like you know using the horizontal components and the vertical components we shall try to find the tension in the string okay for this first case okay i'm just solving this i'll be doing the first case uh, and you will be doing the second case yourself okay now um if you look at the horizontal components over here then i can say that this um, r over here is going to be equal to t cos 30 that is the first equation taking the horizontal components and if you take consider the vertical components then you must be writing it as uh, this x plus this t sine 30 that is equal to the weight okay so we have uh, this x plus t sine 30 that is equal to 20 okay we have been given the coefficient of friction so you can change this x over here uh, using this um, r so if your r is this you can say that x is going to be 0.24 times uh, r which is t cos 30 okay so instead of this x i'll be writing 0.24 t cos 30 plus t sine 30 that is equal to 20 i believe you can solve this equation you can get your t for the first case when this is about to slip downwards okay and then you can find the second case yourself okay uh, I, i'll try to solve one more question in this video so that i can conclude this chapter 
Okay, uh, yeah. I have um, taken a question from June 12, variant 41, and the seventh question I have here. Okay, now it says uh, that uh, we have um, um, a small ring of mass 0.2 kg is threaded on a fixed vertical rod. Okay, so here is I'm showing this through the green. There is this ring of mass 0.2 kg. So I'll be showing its weight downwards here. This is two newtons. Okay. And then we have uh, the end A of a light extensible string, inextensible string is attached to the ring. The other end C of the string is attached to a fixed point of the rod above A. A horizontal force of magnitude A even is applied to the point B of the string where AB is 1.5, BC is 2. The system is in equilibrium with the string taut and AB right angles to BC. Okay, so guys, you can uh, Google this question from uh, net, okay? And you can see the statement and the diagram so that you can understand this clearly. Now it says, find the tension in the part AB of the string and the tension in the part BC of the string. Okay, so in this case, Okay, you will soon find out why I have chosen this question. Okay, now this is uh, the equilibrium situation over here. And let me just see this, that if this rod is rough or smooth. Let me check this. It says a small ring of this third in a fixed vertical rod. Find the tension, the equilibrium. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, the second part is asking for the friction. Okay. So right now we have the situation. So we have to find the tension the part AB and the part BC. Okay. So you see these are two different strings over here now. So um, now this is why I have chosen this question. The reason is that we have these strings, and if for this point B over here, I will have to show the tensions in this direction. Okay. Because this B is in equilibrium, there is a force 8 Newton acting on this. And these two strings, they are like, you know, move, uh, pulling this towards C and A so that this remains in equilibrium. This doesn't move from this position. If you look at this particle A and you look at this string AB, then you will have to show this tension. Like, let me call this tension T1 over here and this tension T2 over here. Okay. So if we, so I'm just going to tell you again that if you look at this point, we focus the point B, the tensions in these strings, they have to be away from B. Only then this can be in equilibrium. And if you look at this um, ring at this point A, how can this ring be in this position that is because of this string this which is pulling this upwards so for this string for this ring a over here we shall use the same tension but this will be acting upwards okay so we have this 2 we have this 1.5 so if you use that thing um, the the simple trigonometry thing that this is um, 1.5 this is 2 so 0.3.5 yeah so point this should be 2.5 then okay because i'm just using using that ratio that we tell the 3 4 5 so i just have taken use this in this is a sad thing coming in in between over here if this is 1.5 this is 2 so then this has to be 2.5 so that is, I've determined this 2.5. So this was just an extra thing for you. Okay, so if you have the angle theta over here and you have the angle alpha over here, then you can easily determine the uh, the values of, let me write over here. Um, guys, by the way, you can solve this question to the Lemmy's theorem as well. Okay, sine theta is going to be um, 3 over 5 that is 0.6 and cos theta is going to be 4 over 5 and similarly the sine alpha will be 4 over 5 and the cos alpha will be 3 over 5 okay 
So, um, I'm telling you again, you can try this through the Lemmy's theorem as well. Okay, so I'm just going to resolve this over here. If this is theta, this is theta. Okay, so let me write this, this as, this is T2 cos theta. And this one is T2 sin theta and if I resolve this T over here I have this alpha and here is the alpha okay so this will be uh, this one is going to be T1 cos alpha and this one is T1 sin alpha now this is um, the advantage of uh, watching this video on YouTube that you can pause this, you can rewind this, you can go back, you can slow it down. So you see, this is this looks like a very very complicated diagram over here, but you can go back and see that how these forces have been resolved over here. Okay, so if I uh, use the horizontal components at the point B right now, then I can say that. Um, there are two horizontal components uh, which are moving, which are pulling this towards left. One is the T2 sine theta. Okay, so T2 sine theta. Instead of sine theta, I'm using this 3 over 5. So let me write this as 0.6 T2 and then plus T1 sine alpha. So sine alpha is 0.8. I'm going to write it as 0.8 T1. And that is equal to 8. So this is through the horizontal components. And now let's uh, use the vertical components. So vertically at this point B, we have this T2 cos theta. So cos theta is 0.8. So we have uh, 0.8 T2. That is equal to uh, T1 cos alpha. That is this downward. And cos alpha is 0.6. So this is going to be 0.6 T1. Okay, so now I'm going to just leave this up to you. You can take out T1 from this equation. Let me do that for you. This T1 is going to be uh, 0.8 over 0.6 T2. That is 4 over 3 T2. And you can substitute into this equation over here. So this, this would become... Um, uh, this would become, yeah, this is 0.6 T2 plus 0.8 and then 4 over 3 T2. So guys, this is how you will get this T2 and then you put that back into this equation, you will get your T1. And once you have got this, uh, let me just... Um, copy down the value so that I can save my time from the from this uh, marking scheme yeah the tensions are going to be uh, a b may there is 6.4 okay so t1 will be uh, t1 will be 6.4 newtons and t2 will be 4.8 newtons okay so that is, these are the answers. Just pop it down from the back, okay? Um, I, I haven't talked about the Lamy's theorem. This could have been done very smartly through the that Lamy's theorem, okay? Um, Lamy's theorem takes very, very less time to solve that question. Okay, now in the second part, it says the equilibrium is limiting with the ring on the point of sliding up the rod, okay? Now, the second case, now it says... Uh, in the first part, he's told us that there is a, the equilibrium situation, and now it says this equilibrium is limiting, and this the ring is about to move upwards. Okay, so when this ring is about to move upwards, I should show the R over here. This is the R of this situation. This is about to move upwards, and the frictional force would be acting downwards. Okay. So, guys, now this is the point where you will see that now in the same string, we shall be showing this tension, taking this tension away from this, um, this 
uh, this ring okay we have already calculated this tension there is nothing added into the situation nor we have taken off anything so the tensions remain the same okay so uh, now let me uh, like for the second part he says find the coefficient of friction yeah so uh, first of all this is uh, from, from the horizontal parts on this ring at point A you should uh, like you know if I resolve this now this will be resolved like this this is the alpha the alpha is over here okay so these components would be this is going to be your T1 sine alpha okay and this one would be let me write it over here this is T2 sorry T1 cos alpha okay so the the horizontal parts over here they suggest that the R R is going to be equal to that T1 sine alpha yeah this T1 sine alpha okay so we have that T1 which is 6.4 and we have the sine alpha which is 0.8 so this is the R over here okay and then uh, we have to determine this X as well so this component this upward component would be equal to these two downward components okay so uh, we shall say that through the vertical components we have uh, the x plus 2 equal to t1 cos alpha and t1 is 6.4 and the cos alpha is uh, cos alpha is 0. 0.6 okay so this gives us x that is 6.4 times 0. 0.6 and then minus 2 okay so we have this um, R as 5.12. I just use the calculator to find these two values. So now the coefficient of friction that is going to be X over R that is uh, 1.84 over 5.12. This is divided by 5.12. So we have this as 0.359. So this is 0.359 that is it guys okay thank you very much